I feel like he wants us. He wants us to be happy, and he'll give you your heart's desire. So, thank you. <laughs> and I pray God bless you in law school. Either you go on to be a judge, and, and you God use you, and um, you know. People keep saying that to me. <laughs> People keep saying that to me. Something about being judge that's crazy. let me stop saying that's crazy but I keep hearing that I'm like I want to be a lawyer and everyone's like you can go on to be a judge I'm like I didn't say anything about being a judge but maybe it's in my future well I just uh I don't think that was the Lord that was just me I know that's the next step most judges are lawyers you know what I'm saying um, and and, yeah. and but God said be the head and not the tail you can be a defender but you so awkward to sit on that seat and let God. I know you're a woman of God, and, and you're gonna be speaking to the Holy Spirit even as you you, you judge over people. Ask God to give you a spirit of, of a judge and be able to discern even if the court case ain't showing all the true evidence. The Holy Spirit speaking you said that, that brother is innocent, and you be able to preside and God use you even as a lawyer. Father, I ask you to use her, give her the words, Father, better discern, bring people to your daughter, Father. That, that they need representation, Father, that they need help in this area in Jesus' name. Father, bless her, baby. Pay, I want to, Father, better pay for college without being yes. going to debt. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hey, God says you hey. will receive. <laughs> you know, it like this. I know you might not, I don't know. You know, I'm not as prophetic as all. Uh, all um, my other brothers and sisters here. But I just know that we do need good judges. Now, if it's your desire to be a lawyer, you go on on and be a lawyer. But if you ever get a desire to be a judge, be that. Because God need that. We, especially in that judge and see, we need people of God who listening to, just like uh, Prophet Charles said, who listening to the Holy Spirit. Because you know, a lot of people been you know what the, you know what the deal is on that. So you know we need good-hearted judges in the seat to to really do the will of God. Let me just keep it like that. But bless you, <laughs> bless you, sweetheart. You, God got beautiful things for you. Receive them word that Prophet Charles hold on to, them. cause God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask from the major to the minor thing. No matter what you ask Him. You know, and I just want to say I'm just so full. I don't even want to start crying on y'all, but I just, <laughs> I'm just so full. You know, your poetry is just so edifying for me. And it, and it just really show how powerful our God is. Like, we can just get and hold on to that revelation of how powerful, good God, our Lord is. And then we won't, we won't be in this situation that we in. And you know me, I'm just I'm gonna get on that air by the way, cause I know we got some more talent going. I want to hear some more profit or uh, child porn. But I would just, yeah, you know, I might not look like it, but I'm old school and I was thinking about that old song, that old hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. Man. And you know what I'm saying? I just encourage everybody to read the lyrics of that song. And you know, just know it's a privilege. Amen. to be able to carry everything Amen. to God in prayer to be able to to carry the thing to God in prayer and we're not we 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 forfeit our joy because we don't carry these things to God in prayer and you know we have to do those things stand on it and know that God is God when he's standing on everybody gonna fall down they got to bow before him and that's your father so you know what I'm saying? I, I did. I couldn't hold it. I didn't want to let y'all know I'm full and I'm grateful. I'm just grateful to be here. All right, let me get out. Get out your way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Get out your way. God. Praise God. Oh yes. I did. I see your hand up or something. Oh yeah. Um, Pandora does. I just I saw on um, what's it called? I saw her the, the girl that wants to be the lawyer. I saw her in a uh, in a suit like a lawyer suit. Mm -hmm. goes. I just wanted to share that because I saw that as she was talking about it. Thank you. Yeah. Something like her future. I saw her future pretty far. Kind of crazy. <laughs> I saw it too. Oh, you did? I'm seeing, I'm seeing zero. Like, I can see, like, the money. God's going to bless you with that money. I don't want you to, I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, God is faithful. So, um, God is faithful. 
So you it's just, a zero. Yeah, like you owe in zero money. Like, <laughs> law school, uh, from my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, Amen. God so, bless you. But, uh, Man, uh, bed cancellation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Great news. Everybody yeah. good? Abdul, John, y'all good? <clears throat> yeah, we good. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Here's, here's this one, just the blood. This is simple. The blood. A beautiful sacrifice, a sweet smelling offering. The only way man so lost could receive forgiveness for his sins. In the blood, there is life. By the blood, we are set free. The blood of Jesus Christ saves, delivers, and redeems. The blood deeply washes away all iniquities and sins. Thanks to the crimson blood of the spotless lamb, we have victory and we win. His blood purifies, it sanctifies, it cleanses, and it heals. There is power in the blood, and yes, there is mercy too. The lamb of God, God's precious son, shed his blood for me and you. Amen. Amen. Love it. Amen. 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 Oh, the blood. Um, okay. Um, B.Y., go on on the sink. Go on on the sink, B.Y. Come on, B.Y. Oh, I was just over here, man. You talking about the blood. I had zoned out for a minute. I had to go to the hymn, hymn alone. Okay. Um, <laughs> here's one called the cross. All these things come to mind when I think of the cross, death, sadness, overwhelming despair, unimaginable pain, his precious blood, his brutally torn flesh. I see a shameful end, the burden he had to bear, a cruel, torturous death. I see sadness and despair. But then I looked at the cross with my carnal mind, but now I see it with my spiritual eyes, knowing it was necessary for the Messiah to die. Now I see the perfect example of God's love, how he was willing to leave his home above to come to an evil world and be wrapped in sinful flesh. God the Father sent his only begotten son, he sent his very best. Now, when I think of the cross, I don't just see his bad, it's bad. But now I see the good. They may have shamefully displayed our savior on two logs, near naked for all to see. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Yes, at the cross his blood was shed, but with his blood he cleansed our iniquities and sins. He, en he endured great pain. And then he died, but it was so that, so that simple man could live. The cross is not just a, a reminder of his death, but also of his strength, his mercy, and his life. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was the ultimate sacrifice. His body may have been beaten and broken, but by his stripes, we were healed. Through the cross, we have victory. Through the cross, we win. Through the cross, we are delivered and forever reconciled with him. The cross is not a is not just a symbol of his death, but also of his resurrection power. Because death could not hold him down, he died and rose from the grave in 72 hours. The cross is a beautiful symbol of love, joy, and hope to all that believe. The cross represents the life he gave so that we could have ever peace. Amen. Amen. So, you know, the, 
but that's this, that's what just a, a few of the poems from my book. Um, brother Charles, that 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 poem remind me of this thing that uh this saying or this analogy that one a wise man once said that Jesus death was the doorway for him to go to hell to get the keys for Satan. <laughs> death was just that doorway so he can get the keys so we can have the key. Come on so now. thank Come on. you. Thank you for this, you know, putting that back in my mind. Your poem did take my mind somewhere. Just give me a lot of revelation. Again, I, I really do <laughs> appreciate you hearkening unto God. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, Jesus, when he, see, Jesus is a redeemer. Re, to re, redeem, you go buy back. See, Adam and Eve lost so much in the garden. Everlasting life, uh, sickness came, death came, uh, separation from God. But Jesus on the cross said, I'm a redeeming man. I'm buying him back from Satan. Uh, for, uh, he shed blood to forgive every man, woman, boy, and girl who ever lived past during his time in the future, come on now. He shed blood to forgive us of all iniquity and sins. His blood said, not only with my blood will I uh, forgive you, but I'm uh, healing you. Just, uh, just claim it. He, he gave up the ghost, went into the grave. Actually, he was forgiven why he was on the cross. Come on now. Uh, but he went into the grave, preached to the lost souls who was in the grave. Come on now. He said so he took the power from the grave, the sting from death, Led captivity captive, gave gifts of the man, all in his hand, jumped Ooh. back in his body, which, by the Ooh. way, his body didn't see corruption, his body didn't decay, walked yeah. through the stone wall, and was seen by 500. Jesus is a bad man. <laughs> we know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey. Better than Jesus. But he, everything Adam and Eve lost in the garden, Jesus got it back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, come on now, he robbed, it said he. Led captivity, captive gave gifts of me. He robbed Satan of everything that we lost. So Jesus do a complete work. Uh, everybody like Jesus. Uh, I, I wish the world knew who Jesus was. Cause come on now, it, they just they just playing. The devil just got the folk playing with this. Anything, anything you're talking about is a waste of time. It's futile. A waste it's, of time. It's just, Ooh, come on now. Uh. Kareem, uh, let me, uh, you, uh, let me, let me uh, share a poem. Then, then Kareem has it like her head hands up. This is the rain, okay. And I know I, I wrote this one because I hear people complaining about the rain, and people, you have to watch as you say, death and life is the power of, uh, of your tongue. And you complaining about rain, whether men say, oh, it's a dark and gloomy day, well, but if if it don't rain, crops don't grow, bro. You know, God don't like you complaining. That's a blessing. So I said, uh, the rain. The wet manna from above, so simple yet so profound. Once earth's waters came rushing up like springs from the ground. When man first met me, I destroyed the earth in 40 days and 40 nights. Then I was an agent of destruction, but now I'm a great sustenance of life. I am the liquid sunshine that falls drip drop from the clouds. And as I fall, I'll hear a wonderful symphony of sounds. Crystal clear, worth more than gold. I refresh, renew, and restore the old. All the inhabitants of earth know my name. All rely on me, all drink and taste my sweet. I fall from the earth, replenish the ground, and cool my thirst. I cool the air and soothe the wounds. Your grandmother does not see the morning news. She feel me in her knees. Whether men stand about me because I come with dark wounds and hay. But if I do not come, you will not die. I am a necessary, irreplaceable element called the teardrops of the cloud. Ages of history. Tell my story. Ah, uh, and the rain. So Amen. That was, Amen. You know, the rain. And actually, for years, my grandmother has been saying that when it rains, she can feel it. 
beforehand in her knees. So that's where I got that from. Like, Grandma, you can feel this on rain in your knees. I said, yeah, baby. <laughs> but I just added that in there. Go ahead, Corey May. I didn't mean it. I was putting the clapping emoji. I didn't mean to. Oh, okay, 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 no. okay. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, clapping emoji. I mean, I don't do this poem much, but this is one of the first poems I was doing. I added to the book. It's called Cloud Poem. It's the work of his hands. I mean, I mean nobody can do the stuff God do. You know, he's just awesome. God creates clouds. He creates the winds. He creates snow. Beautiful things. So simple, profound, but you can't you can't duplicate it. Um, even there's a joke where man, uh, it's God versus man, or man versus God. And, and man said, how we, we've become super intelligent and we can do this and we can do that. So we want to uh, show that we're greater than God. And so we've even gotten to the point where we can create a man. And so we want to have a contest. You can create or like create a man. And God said, yeah, that's no problem. But you, but use your, use your own dirt. And, and, and the, the joke is, man can't do anything. You can't create life. You can only duplicate or uh, even anything that man uses, he has to use something that God has given us. So even in our intelligence, you, get, you know, if you, if you want to create a man, go ahead and use your own dirt. So, and we can't create dirt. So, uh, this is the cloud form. Mm. I'm getting a bit distracted, but let's go for one for green. I'm doing another one. Wonderful green. And as I look out on a beautiful landscape of trees, I'm simply fascinated at all that I see. So breathtaking is this natural canvas to me and with childlike curiosity, I begin to wonder what was the almighty thinking when he created so many different colors of green, light and green, Light green and dark, forest and jade. Green that starts with the blades of grass and rises up to the bushes and vines and then adorns the leaves of the trees as they reach into the sky. Lifted up as they are praising God. Creating, creating a vibrant visual delight for our eyes. God could have very easily created one ultimate shade of green and cast his paintbrush upon this masterpiece and it would have been splendid. But God is in the details and I guess it was just a part of his divine creativity and it is a blessing and honor for my eyes to gaze and see his amazing creative ability. So it was after a fast, I'm working, I just go outside and I'm like, geez. I'm like, wow, so many different colors of green just perfectly blended together and just, just beautiful, you know? I'm like, I'm just thinking, I'm wow, okay, why are there so many different colors of green? Why not just one color of green? But I mean, this, that's just God. He is, he is, he's perfect. It's, even his, his creativity is amazing. And um, also, cloud poems. Wonderful, enormous giants. Majestic beauties beyond compare. They hover still. Gently float above and sail to the heavens to a destination unknown. They are the pure white that perfectly adorns the peaceful blue canvas that is the sky. They are the birthplace of rainbows, the raiment of angels as they descend from heaven, carriers of heavenly messages. And they have been forever immortalized by Michelangelo and other artists throughout time. The only inhabitants of the great blue above they are mighty dust that bring peaceful winds, storms of destruction, loud thunders and flashing bolts of lightning. They release drops of cool, fresh rain, snow, terrible balls of hail, and replenish the earth's waters and thirsty land. They mesmerize the thoughts of children and men as they pass effortlessly on their way, transforming into various shapes smiling faces and animals of the field. Morning and evening, they are 
complemented by soft shades of orange, red, pink, and gray. Oh, that I wish I could get a closer feel of you, be as the files of the air that in airplanes or the bravest of men that get to touch your cotton-like form to hold you in my hands, feel you against my face, or ride with you to a place far away. And that's just the cloud poem, just the driving clouds. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Since I'm here in, in the mighty wind. Who can stand against the wind when it comes forth from the four corners of the earth? What invention of man or weapon of mass destruction can destroy the wind? When unleashed, its reign of destruction will not end until its tyranny is complete. Without warning, invisible and swift, like a stealth warrior it attacks uprooting the strongest trees, throwing vehicles through the air, demolishing entire buildings, communities with nothing left to spare. For miles, the land is left, the land is left unrecognizable, and everything has been thrust to the ground. Quick duck for cover, sound the alarm, so that all may run to escape from harm. And when allied with water, her dear old friend, she becomes a terrible force on sea and land. She puts island states, entire countries on alert, then crosses the ocean and attacks the other end of the earth. But just as quickly as it came, her wrath slowly subsides until the next time you hear her thunder cry, the mighty wind. And that's just an example of, we think about weapons of mass destruction or we think about bullets and man, the wind is so powerful. When the wind comes, you know, like a hurricane or tornado, you gotta be it. You gotta be in a safe place because it's just just powerful. I don't know what time it is. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. I did want to um, did come in on that right there. The wind that that you right by right there. And you know, I was thinking about too, like the especially people who don't believe in God. I be saying, like, you know, the wind and the air, they don't but they don't believe in God because they can't see God. But yet and it's still you trust the air every day to give you life. You can't see it. You can't, you can't, you can't see, you don't know where it's coming from, but you know that it's there. Yeah. You know. And then you know they have people, but they trust the air, but they can't trust that it's a god, you know. And you right, the wind and the air it's just so powerful. Then going back to your water, what water? I think that now they scientifically discovering that water actually do have a consciousness to it, you know. And it's so crazy because water is such a beautiful thing. It's actually life for us, and I feel like we should sometimes when you. Drink a little water, just look at your water and really they try to get deep with it and know how, how deep the act of just seeing and touching water here and hide from God. It, it's something to really pump up. Amen. Here's one called heaven. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when we have crossed from death to eternal life. What will it be like in paradise? What will it be like in heaven where there is light all around to be surrounded by the glory of God? My heart will be in the perfect place where there is fullness of joy and everlasting peace. Oh, we will hear things ears have never heard and see things I have never seen, all prepared for those who faithfully serve the King. When I think of heaven, so many wonderful things come to mind. There are unimaginable wonders, profound beauty and majesty, holy angels all around, cherubims, seals, prophets, and stars, and all surrounding the throne of Almighty, everlasting God. And from his throne, the bright flows the water of the precious river of life. 
with the bountiful tree of life, whose 12 fruits are for the healing of the nation. There we will have a new name, be clothed in clean, fine white robe, living mansions sitting on streets of pure gold. We will get to walk with Abraham, Moses, and the saints of old and family and friends who have gone by. We shall judge angels for forever sing his praises. Sing with an angelic choir. Then we will receive our reward for all the works that we have done. Yes, on that day we will dwell where there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness, no more sin. Our groom shall lift our veil and uphold his bride and look upon us with loving pride. Forever we will feel his embrace and behold our Savior face to face. This is one thing about Amen. So, anybody got anything else? Prayer request? Kamara, you got anything? Okay, well, thank you guys. No, I always wonder. Go ahead. Uh, I always wondered what Samson looks like because, you know, some people think he's huge, but I think he's skinny, actually. <laughs> no, you're right, Abdul. I hate when the movies do Samson. They, they go find this super buff dude. And, and like, okay, that doesn't give God no glory. You know what I'm saying? Samson was a regular skinny guy, just like, just like me, just like any of us. He, he was a normal mm -hmm. guy, but it was the Holy Ghost. It was the Spirit of God that dwelt yeah. on now. It came yeah. on him. And when the spirit of God came on him, boy, oh, you better run. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it was the Holy Spirit. He, he was chosen. He was a prophet. It was all God. So I, I hate when I see those movies. And it's just a, it's, uh, it's a representation. But you ain't gave God no glory. If if he is if he look like on a sports nigga and, and can break somebody with his own strength, what did he need the Holy Spirit? You know what I'm saying? It was it was warriors in those days. They were giants. It was David. David. Oh, it was mighty men of valor who had strength and he was trained. Samson was a prophet. He he wasn't no warrior. It was, the Holy Spirit came on. No. And he was like, he was, he was, man, he could, man. So you're right, Abdul. So, I totally believe that. So he he caught the Holy Ghost when pretty much when it, when the spirit fell on him. That yes. was him catching the Holy Ghost. The spirit will follow him, and you you, okay. you you better be on his side, or you better be a woman. That's the only thing gonna save you. What's the and that's bad. I you, you know what I'm saying. But nah, that is true. That what happened. He, he, he ripped a lion in half. How you rip a lion in half, man? Wow. He's a thousand people, a thousand men with a with a uh with a jawbone, killed him. Come on now. He was the wrong one. You talking about the come on, man. People, we we put God in a box. Mm. We put mm. God in a box. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to take mm -hmm. God out of a box. Mm -hmm. We make what God will and what mm -hmm. God to do what he wanna do. Who are you tell me what God what? that ain't God? Man, God come on, man. We get up God twisted. God do what he wanna do. Even oh, there's that, and that's it's another book that I wrote. Uh, called Supernatural Bible Style. I talk about anything supernatural, I'm talking about it. Mm. But Samson is a prime example. The Holy Spirit, come on him. He went, Samson didn't, didn't, didn't go to gold gym and, and the big press. That got me strong. No, <laughs> Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Spirit came on him. Said, hey, if, if, if you was a Philistine, you, you, better, you better run. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or he about to get you. You about to meet yeah. the Lord. You know what I'm saying? If you came against Samson when, he, when the Holy Spirit went. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> I'm serious. It, it ain't no joke. But it's so much good stuff that's in the Bible. We do stand mm. on the Bible. It, even transfiguration. Have y'all seen the, It's a movie called Jump, where the, the guy was in one place and he imagined another place and he was in the other place. Have y'all seen that movie? Anyway, oh, uh, uh, Jumper? Yeah, mm -hmm. You're talking about Jumper? Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good movie. Oh, man. I love that movie, bro. That's I really good. That movie. That, that's in the Bible. Okay, in the New Testament, it's an Ethiopian. We got five more minutes. 
He's just talking. There's an Ethiopian. He's reading the Bible. He's reading the word. And uh, I think I don't know who the hell it was Stephen or Philip, but I went up to him and said, "Can you can you understand what I'm reading?" And he said, "How can I understand what I'm reading unless somebody tell me what it is?" So uh, he explained it to him. I think he might have baptized or something. But as soon as when he stopped ministering to his brother, mm -hmm. the scripture says he shot up into the air and was gone. They said the Ethiopian saw him no more, and he went to his next ministry destination. Come on now. It's angels. I always wondered about that. Come that in now. Acts? Amen. Yeah, that's in the book of Acts. Same thing with Elijah. Elijah didn't see death. Uh, Elijah went up into heaven like a, in a whirlwind. Come on now. Of course, now. Oh, yeah. Um, when, when Samson had died, or not Samson, uh, Samuel, and Saul went to go seek the witch of Endor. Did that witch really raise up uh, Samuel, or was that just the Lord intervening and allowing him to, you know, allowing his spirit to to come up and speak to Saul? Bro, brother, see, see, that's why God says stay away from a witch. There's mm -hmm. dark powers and there's the Holy Ghost power. There's holy power. Witches mm -hmm. have access to spiritual the, the spiritual realm. Uh, so even you know, you know, I used to think psychics were fake. No, there's some there's psychics. Okay, the, uh, psychics are real. Like they can see in the spirit realm. Witches do whatever, and they talk to just like y'all talk to the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Demons talk to Satan, and Satan tell them stuff. So yeah, ah, right, come mm -hmm. on, that Jack. It's a familiar spirit. So okay. people who, have, who are psychics, they have a demon mm -hmm. in them, and that demon is called a familiar spirit. That spirit mm -hmm. in them is familiar with them and familiar with the spirit realm. So uh, when you go to these psychic folk and he said, yeah, I, I see your grandmama and I see a, a charm, a, a bracelet in your house that you've been and on your 13th birthday and the folks start crying and, and she is going on their back. How is that real? Because it's a demon talking to that man and telling them Mm -hmm. demons, live, demons sit there and watch you. They watch you every part yep. of your life, just like angels are there. Mm -hmm. So that demon is telling that man what to tell, what to tell you. You better run. I don't want to hear nothing. No psychic you gotta say, but I want to repent. Because you ain't got nothing for me, bro. Don't I don't want to hear it. Amen. If, if a demon told you something was true, I don't want to hear that, bro, because it came from the wrong source. Amen. Right? I don't want to hear it. And, and, and so that stuff is real, but he shouldn't, even then, he shouldn't have been doing it. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, he, he lost connection with the Lord, so he shouldn't have been doing that, but he knew that they have access to spiritual place. That's why you can't play with this stuff. This stuff ain't no joke. Witchcraft. That stuff ain't no joke. <laughs> yep, especially in uh, Africa, especially like, you know, in Nigeria and Niger and stuff. Like, you know, Christians, like, they don't, I mean, witches don't even hide it, you know, over there. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, we we because we are a Christian nation, and then um, but over there they practice witchcraft. Folk go to them. They just like y'all go to a prophet or go to the pastor. Uh, yeah, go to the come on, Matt. Oh, Matt, don't okay, came in. Just that y'all go to the pastor for advice. It's witches who literally would go to um, people go to the witch and tell them they want this, they want money, they want to bind somebody, cast spells. I have a friend. He used to be a witch. Uh, he used to practice witchcraft. He said he did all that. Even, but so it's 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 real. But you need to stay away from it. Stay away from it. You see, hey, man. Uh, yeah, Mac is on. What's going on, Mac? He ain't said nothing. But so we just have to stay away from it. But I am a do. I, I finished the book called Supernatural Bible Style. Anything oh, supernatural? Man. I'm talking about it. What's going on, Mac? I think you're trying to get everything together. <laughs> What's going on? So we got a minute left. So I don't know if y'all just want to casually talk for some or whatever y'all want to do. Y'all, uh, what's up? Oh, yes. Yeah, I, do. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, we can casually talk. Okay. So Matt, uh, you, uh, Zoom gives us four, uh, four. 43 minutes. We're out of time. So I got to close it out and you come back on. We just talking. I've been done the poetry. We're talking now. Okay.
So I got to close it out and you got to come right back in if you just want to talk and you know talk to the people or whatever. Everybody we be talking and chilling. So I'm closing it out. We're going to come right back in. All right? You don't have, you don't have to close it out, brother. No, it gives you 43 minutes and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shut down on us. It says less than a minute. We've used the 43 minutes. So hold on a second. Okay, whatever you guys want. All right, to do. So we're gonna come back in and we're just gonna talk. We